Hello and welcome back to New Wave Hockey. I'm your host, Link Dansevich, and today is the NHL Draft. What you all have been waiting for, and I will be live reacting to every single pick in the first round. I have the TV on right now. It's about 6.30. Oh, yeah, that's my, that's my alarm for right now. I'm suited up, as you can see. I mean, as nice as I could probably get, but this is truly a historic night for the NHL. Every single draft is. They are at the Sphere in Las Vegas. That is, like, are you watching this? This is crazy. This is really awesome. So, from now on, I'm just going to sit back, relax, and give you my first thoughts on every single pick here in this draft. Please enjoy. up talking for the sharks and we know who this pick is going to be like this is probably the easiest pick we can talk about so let's see joe thorns announcing the pick how about that huh there you go first overall pick is now going to be announcing another first overall pick there you go oh my gosh this is such a shocker oh my gosh they picked macklin celebrini so celebrini let's talk about him for a minute um this is about as surefire as a pick as it can really get skating ability is the best in the draft, but it's very interesting because it's not because of his speed, not because of his four-way mobility, but because of how smart he is as a skater. Officially weighing in at 197 pounds, six foot, dead even. This guy was a junior shark, and now he plays for the team that he was playing for the junior team of. I don't know, weird uh, way of just wording that now. So again, you're not just getting a player who's going to have a upside to score a ton of goal. I mean, I really don't know what the offensive upside is with Celebrini. He could be a guy that could be 90 points a year or one of the dead ringers for, you know, 100 every single year. But I think one thing that's surefire is that you're getting a franchise-defining center who can play two-way styles of game for you. And I'm a huge fan of it. Macklin Celebrini, I mean, come on. This is the easiest pick in the entire draft. He goes number one overall. So the pick is not officially in, but Chicago's on the clock now. Um, obviously, this is where the draft gets super interesting. Here they go. Here comes Bedard. So he's going to announce it. The first overall pick from last year will announce this year's second overall pick. And we knew where this was going to go. I'm two for two right now in my draft predictions. I've seen this guy three times. I'm a huge, huge fan of of how he's developed his development path from the USHL to now going into the NCAA. Two straight NCAA picks. you love to see it. One of the biggest red flags that I have with him is that his offensive upside is kind of questionable. Of course, you have 6'2", 205 pounds. This guy is a Belarusian monster, and he is a danger in front of that. This guy will literally punish you any way available. I really am a huge fan of what he does on the defensive side of the puck. Very smart. He's the safest pick in the entire draft. However, you don't know what he's going to bring you offensively, and I think they're missing out by not having that dynamic duo between Demidov and Bedard. But this is about as safe as a pick as it gets. This guy is great defensively. He is the perfect way to round out that back end that now has Sam Renzel, Kevin Korchinski, Artem Levshinov. This is a great pick. I think it's really, really solid. I think it could have been a little bit better because they could have gotten Demidov, but again, that's my personal bias. So, great pick, Chicago. He's my number 14 in the draft. I think that he is going to be a great player someday with the proper development, and I think he needs time and space to develop, and again, he will probably be afforded that. He needs another year in the OHL and probably a year and a half in the AHL to gestate. I love this reach for them. I love how bold they're, they've been in these last few drafts. However, He's my number 14 pick for a reason. I think there were more NHL-ready players here. I think there were more. Uh, there were players with higher upside here. Caden Lindstrom is one of them. But this, seeing where the Ducks will probably go, this was, the, this like, again, this was a very solid pick with them. Beckett Seneca, I mean, dude, this is a great pick for them. Um, I do think they could have gone somewhere else. I would give it, I'm going to give it, like, a B plus instead of, like, you know, an A. But, um, again... I'm I'm kind of I'm content with this. I am content with this. I don't think it's the best place they I don't think it's the best pick they could have gone, but again, they went with McTavish. Look how that paid off. I do trust Pat Verbeek in terms of scouting prospects. This guy looks really solid. Um Beckett Seneca, again. Again, I don't really have too many complaints. He looks kind of shocked when he got picked, but wow, I, I I do wish that he had a better OHL season overall, because I will say uh, the main reason why I really like him 
Yeah, it says right there. It's the ESPN graphic. So in his first 51 games, he had 46 points. In his last 28 games, he had 44 points. So he got significantly better over the rest of the year, which is, again, good to see. And then, again, watch his playoffs because his playoffs were fantastic. His playoff run was fantastic. It was the main reason why I think he went this high. He's not going to be ready for a couple of years, but I think people are going to look back on this pick and be like, wow. This is a great player. So this is one of the beauties of me recording this live and having no script. Uh, I have no idea where Columbus is going to go. Seneca just got, went, and I was like, that's like that's like not really likely. He went, and now Demidov and Lindstrom is on the board. Montreal, congratulations. You got one of Caden Lindstrom or Ivan Demidov, which I didn't even predict. So I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that Demidov goes here, so I'm right, and I can be three for four instead of two for four, because I want to get more than two uh, picks right in this entire draft. Um, but the Jackets, really, this is where it gets interesting here. Don Waddell, new GM, he just got there. So I would be, lo I would love to see what he will do with this pick here. I think it's going to be Demidov here. Oh, my gosh, dude. This is so exciting. I love this. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. All right. All right. That's a good pick. Good pick for them. All right. Yeah, that's a very solid pick for Columbus. I'm a huge fan of that. All right, Caden Lindstrom. So he's not my he's not my first favorite guy in the slot. Obviously, Demidov falling to five is ridiculous. That's crazy. I can't believe that he already he fell to five. And it would be so funny if Kent Hughes messed it up and kept him falling yet again. But the guy from Chetwin BC, he is a monster. Six foot three, two hundred and thirteen pounds. This dude will run the hell through you. He's he can play in the center. He can play on the wing. That's why he's so damn versatile. And I like that. And what they're building down the middle for the Blue Jackets, because now they have Fantilli. They have this guy. And I really like this, that they're building it off size and skill. And you have guys that can do both of these things. He does have a little bit of an injury concern, but, dude, the skills and the talents, you, I, I, I can't help but gush over it. This is a great pick for them. Montreal's next. Uh, my pick, or my guess for them right now, is probably going to be, they're going to go with Demidov. Wow. I mean, they just, just gifted Demidov on a platter. Okay, so now we are kind of pinballing. The momentum's kind of working, and now Montreal's on the clock. I don't see how this won't be Ivan Demidov here. I really don't. It, it has to be Demidov or else Kent Hughes loses his job. Celine Dion is making the selection. Guys, oh my gosh, French Canadians everywhere are going nuts. This is, abs this is the most glorious day for Habs fans. This is incredible. Celine Dion. That's my girl. I love her, dude. Oh my gosh. Hopefully it's Ivan Demidov or else Kent Hughes is out of a job. Yep, and we knew it was going to be him. Ivan Demidov, the second best player in the entire draft. I can't believe he fell all the way to number five. This is ridiculous, but this is the best skill player on the Montreal Canadiens roster right now, and he's not even going to be playing for them for another year. Uh, tremendous player, um, super, super ta hyper talented. I think he's the best stick handling ability I've ever seen in a prospect. Of course, six foot zero, almost six foot one. Like it's really close to being six foot one. 192 pounds. This guy has been the MVP for the MHL for two straight years because Matthew Michkov has been the KHL for two years. But um, I love this pick. How did he fall to five? I'm actually mad about how he fell to five. So I got three straight picks wrong after getting uh, Levshinov and Celebrini right. I uh, mean, duh, obviously. So Utah, I have Zane Parekh going. So we're going to see what happens with the team formerly known as the Arizona Coyotes next up. So they're just explaining now this is the first pick in their franchise's history because they didn't carry over the Arizona Coyotes moniker, but I'm going to keep it because they all have their draft picks and everything. This looks like it's going to go defenseman. Whether that's Zeev Boyum because he fell to six because that looks like it could be a pretty good option there. I mean, I would love to see Zeev Boyum here. And they could go Sam Dickinson, Anton Salaya, Zeev Boyum, or Zane Parekh. I would love to see it be Zane Parekh so I could be like, you know, right about it. But Zeev Boyum would be the best player available in my opinion. So let's just see what they go with here. There you go. The owner is Ryan Smith. Along with, uh, look, people are going to boo them. People are going to boo Utah and whatever. But they figured out the Arizona situation by moving them. All right, there you go. I like this owner. He's a good guy. Whoa! They don't go with defense! Whoa! Whoa! All right. This is a bit... All right. That was a little bit of a shock to me. But, Tej Aginla, fantastic player. Okay, I thought the run of defense was going to start here. But, wow. Tej Aginla. All right. Sorry to burst your ear bumps. But, yeah, Tej Aginla is the pick here from Kelowna in the WHL. The son of the Calgary Flames legend, Jerome McGinley. I had him going nine to the Calgary Flames because I thought that would be cool. But again, he's too good of a prospect to pass up on. I mean, I love this pick for Tej. I mean, look, he goes to a new franchise. This guy is the, the, this guy is the generational 
like talent on offense that they need to start out with because they have Genther. They have a couple of players that are pieces. This guy could become the centerpiece, which I really like. And he's listed at center. He probably will fit more into a wing role. But again, he's going to go back to Kelowna next year, and he's going to be playing a lot at center because they don't have a lot of center depth. And I like that development for him. That's really going to show a ton. He is pretty much great everywhere. I don't have a lot of issues with his game at all. He probably is the best. He's one of the best shots in the entire draft. I have no issues with his game. Aside from, again, not not uh, the size isn't as big uh, as I would like. Again, I would have loved to see that Utah would have been like a named team by this point. But TJ Ginla, that's a great pick to start off a franchise. Again, I thought they could have gone with anywhere in terms of defensemen here. I really thought it was going to be defense. And I, I really love the spunk of that owner, man. Really great stuff from them. Wow. Good stuff. TJ Ginla goes six overall to the Utah Hockey Club. That's a surprise. This is probably where the run on the fence will start. If not, Berkeley Catton will probably be the pick. Um, I would love to see Z Boyum going here, but I think they really like Sam Dickinson or Anton Salayev. So I have Salayev going here in my mock draft. Obviously, that might not happen, so we will see what happens there uh, with this pick. But, man, I have no idea. Could be another riser. This draft is so exciting. Yeah! <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god, I'm such a huge fan of this. The second defenseman off the board is Carter Yakumchuk. Let's go! I have been a huge fan of this guy for a long time, and this is the exact pick that Ottawa needs to get things going. Six foot three, 202 pounds. This guy is a, a monster. He's truly a monster. And he's got the goal-scoring ability to, to boot. I am such a huge fan of Yakumchuk. He's number seven on my list for a reason, and now he goes number seven. So... That's kind of poetic. I really I really like it. I do like Anton Salayev better. But in terms of getting the best between the two, Z Boyum is a fantastic skill guy, offensively gifted as hell. Anton Salayev, really tall, really really smart defensive defenseman who has puck moving capabilities. This is the perfect mix between them. But as Anna Pierce said in one of my draft ranking videos, teams are going to love this snark. The snark is it's he's Matt Kachuk on defense. You want this type of snark in your locker room. Big fan of Cardiac Chuck. He's going to be a player that people will hate to play against in, in Ottawa. Okay, so Seattle is on the clock now. I am expecting the run of defensemen to start here. Um, Zeb Boyum is still on the clock. He's my third-ranked player on the entire draft. Um, huge fan of him. Could be Anton Slyev. I have Sam Dickinson here, but that was expecting that Zeb Boyum and Anton Slyev were gone at this point, so we'll see. One of my favorite American prospects is announcing this pick, Matty Beniers, the guy that I thought should have gone first overall in 2021. He's selecting here for Seattle. Let's see who they pick. Wow. Berkeley Catton. All right. So I have a few issues with this pick. Um, he's my number 13 ranked player. Again, <clears throat> I like the Seneca pick more than this one. And I'll tell you why. And here, um, here's basically the reason. I think it's a good place for him to go in terms of like where he could have gone. Seattle is one of the better places where he could have been supported and helped out. I'm a little nervous because, again, they are drafting a lot of players like Edward Shala last year. A little bit of questionable compete. There is not a there's not a lot of compete and effort in this guy's game. That being said, the offensive game is actually truly incredible. He's the deadliest player in the rush in this entire draft. One of the best passers in the entire draft. He truly is deadly with the, with his passing vision. I love it. And, again, he's a great skater. They've probably seen him beat him up on the Seattle Thunderbirds a lot. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to poke holes in his game until you get on the defensive side of the game. The defensive side of the game is really bad. And uh, one of the reasons why people think his analytics are good is because he's holding the puck a lot. I would love to see better off-puck play. I would like to see better effort. But Berkeley Catton is not a bad option for them to go here. Um, I really like this as a destination for Catton. But as a pick for Seattle, I think a defenseman could have been a better option. Now, as a Flyers fan, I want them to trade it up for Zee Boyum, But... Calgary gets their pick at pretty much whoever the hell they want at number nine. Okay, so I didn't give my prediction on the last one. Um, Calgary's on the clock now. They have their pick of Zeev Boyum, Anton Slyev, Sam Dickinson, and Zane Parekh, and they're going up right now. Um, I th I think this the pick has to be Zeev. I had TJ Ginlow here, which is crazy. Crazy. Um, but yeah, Berkeley Catton just went. That was kind of shocking to me. That was kind of wild. Um, we'll see who they go with. I think Zeev Boyum has to be the pick here for Calgary. All right, it's Zane Parekh. I uh, I just missed my reaction for it, but I was like, okay, makes sense. It makes a ton of sense. They need defense, and they need some talent at the defensive side. I'm a little iffy with this pick because they have Hunter Bersevich, who they just acquired. 
But, and I would have, again, I like Zeev Boyum and I like Anton Salaev a ton more. But Zane Prek at nine, that's great value. That's where I have him ranked in terms of like all defensemen. He's my number nine pick. Again, Yakumchuk was my seven overall. Zane was my nine. So, I mean, it's, hey, I'm, get, I'm getting this. This guy's a very smart player, in the, especially in the offensive zone. Um, yeah, he, he will figure out a power, this guy will be a menace in the power play someday. This could be Calgary's version of Quinn Hughes, and it could be Quinn Hughes versus Parekh in the future. The sky is really the limit with Zane Parekh. I'm a huge fan of him. He won the Memorial Cup, dude. This guy is a beast! Beast! He's actually a beast. He's unreal. Number 10, New Jersey. Uh, there have been rumors that they might trade this pick. We will see. Obviously, right now, um... They're taking best available. I have that as Zeev Boyum. That could be Sam Dickinson on their board. That could be Anton Salayev on their board. That could be Konsta Hellenius or Michael Bronsik Nygaard on their board. We don't know. There's a lot here, so we will see what happens at pick 10. I, I had them going with uh, Michael Bronsik Nygaard, but I think Anton Salayev or Zeev Boyum could be the pick here. So we'll see what they will do here with the pick. And Martin Brodeur makes the pick again. I mean, I th how many times has he made the pick for New Jersey? Let's see what he goes here. Ooh, there you go. There we go. Call it. All right, Anton Salayev. Cannot believe he fell to 10. I can't believe it at all. But they need a tall defenseman in the back end. This guy could play in the NHL for them next season if he wanted to. However, it looks like he's going to be riding out his KHL contract, and that goes till 2026. Anton Salayev is a beast. Uh, let's, let's not get anything twisted. He's the best defensive player in this draft. He's elite skating. Elite skating. And I'm not, that's not hyperbole. Elite. I'm not going to ever mess that up. He is an elite skater, elite defensive uh, gap control. I think this is a guy that New Jersey has loved from day one, and I cannot believe that he fell to them. Six foot seven, two hundred eleven pounds. I mean, there's nothing more to say. He's perfectly physical with every single player that he's with. Um, I love this pick. I think I cannot believe that he just fell to them at a, at ten. This is a fantastic pick for New Jersey. They get exactly who they need, um, and he looks really durable for a six foot seven guy on defense. I love this pick for them. That looks incredible for them on their back end. Should be a great future back end in New Jersey. Okay, and no trades have happened in the top 11. So, again, it's another smoke screen. So, we'll see what we get here. But 11, it looks like it's going to be Cole Eiserman. I mean, he was a threat to go to Philly or... Sam Dickinson goes here. All right. Wow, all right. So, it isn't Cole, Cole Eiserman. I think that's a bit of a mistake. But in terms of how the defensemen have fallen here, I can't believe Z Boyum is available at 12. So... I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it. But Sam Dickinson, this is a pretty solid defenseman on most people's boards as the number two or three best defenseman on most people's boards. And I see why. Very steady, very nice pick, very clean pick. He could turn into a very steady back end blue liner for 14, 15 years. I think San Jose wants the longevity with this pick. My player comparison for him is a Aaron Eckblad, and there's a good reason why. He has a lot of off offensive upside to his game. He has a lot of aggression to his game. However, some of that aggression turns into some poor decision-making. I think his sense needs to improve a ton. I'm a little bit worried about what he could turn into in terms of, like, his upside because, again, he has the moon as his upside. But I don't really see it really getting realized. This really opens up Cole Eiserman. He's going to fall, like a, like, a big way. I did not see Dickinson going all the way to 11. I thought teams would be higher on him, but I guess not. Z Boyum is available at 12, and I do want to talk about this, because at 12, I want someone that can support Matthew Michkov for the Flyers. Uh, that's just, like, not, that's not negotiable. I think Costa Hellenius is the best of option at center. Z Boyum is my favorite defenseman in the entire draft, and I really like him. And I think he could be the pick at 12, but again, Sam Dickinson, I am not complaining at all in terms of for... Uh, for San Jose. I mean, they, they make they make the right pick there, I think. I think they're trading this pick. I think he's trading the pick at 12. I think we might have our first trade here. I would love to see who they traded to. But I, I, they must have got a hell of an offer, so I need to see who they who, who they get here. Oh, watch this be Carolina. This could be Carolina here on the phone with them. This could also be Winnipeg. Winnipeg wanted to trade Rucker McGordy, so this could be Winnipeg. This could be Carolina. This could be Nashville. God, I have no idea. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so Minnesota is the team that just traded up into the Flyers spot. They did trade this pick. Um, so they get, the Flyers will get the very next pick, the 13th pick, which could be Zeev Boyum. I think Minnesota is trading up for Zeev Boyum because, I mean, they didn't think he was going to fall this far. And again, that's a great, that's going to be a great back end with Brock Faber and Zeev Boyum there. 
I think this they are trading up for Boyum. That gives Philadelphia a pretty clear lane. I think they're going to select a guy, Constantinus or Michael Hage. I think, I think they're going center. Jet Luchenko is also an option at 13. I don't like it, but let's throw bias at the window. I think this is going to be Zeev Boyum. Let's see who Bill Guerin picks. Yep, it's Zeev Boyum. I knew it. So Zeev Boyum falls to 12. I cannot believe he falls to the number 12 pick. He is my number three defense. He's my number three player in the entire draft. He's the number one defenseman on my entire board. He is so good. How did he fall to 12? How is he the sixth piss, uh, defenseman picked? That is a crazy draft steal. Someday they're going to be talking about the 11 players that went ahead of Zeev Boyum. This is not good. Wow. I, I, wow. I would have liked to have seen him go to Philadelphia because, you know, whatever, but it's cool. I'm cool with it. There was a lot of talk about him potentially going to a lot of places in the top 10, but I like that this is the player place that he ended up. Minnesota, they know how to develop defensemen. I'm not really happy with the return that the Flyers got, but it's okay. They're probably going to select Constantinus at 13. Zeev Boyum, again, I don't need to talk about how amazing this player is. He's absolutely incredible. The smartest defenseman in the entire draft. The passes that he makes, the skating decisions that he makes. He's so smart in space. His physicality is incredible. I, I, like He really is truly one of my favorite players. If you want to watch just Zeev Boyum and how he plays, just watch every single game he played in the World Juniors. This guy is just a joy to watch. Look at this shot. Oh, love it. Look, Minnesota's getting themselves a great player. I would have loved to see him go to Philly, but again, Minnesota, wow. Uh, they automatically get an A-plus grade for their draft for me. Can't believe it that Z fell to them at 12. Unreal. All right, so we are here. Flyers are picking at 13. Uh, they're not going to deep fake me with Z William on the board. It's fine. I think they made the right play here because I think their guy is Constant Hellenius. Um He's the perfect guy for Philadelphia. I mean, and again... Oh, I didn't get the pick right. Exactly right. If he goes to 13, I'm still counting for. I'm still counting it for myself on my big board. I hope this is Hellenius. If it's not, it could be Michael Hage. It could be Trevor Connolly. It, it, as long as it is not a defenseman, I'm okay with it. I don't want it to be Stian Solberg, and I do not want it to be Adam Yerichek. So you're gonna get a live reaction from me about how I feel about this pick. Oh my gosh, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. Uh, MBN would be a cool pick here too. Um, but I, I so desperately want it to be Consta Hellenius. So. But the fact that they traded back for it to be Hellenius, if it's Hellenius. Proud Philly native and Hall of Fame announcer, boxing announcer, Michael Buffer. Yeah, Michael Buffer. Let's get ready to rumble. He's coming up to the Philadelphia selection. He's going to select for Philly. Hopefully it's Consta. Big fan of Hellenius. I, uh, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like, I'm gushing over the pick. Um, oh my gosh. See what we can do here. Here we go. This is a, this is a great guy to get to give the pick. Okay, um, look, if they were going to reach for a guy, Jed Luchenko was going to be the pick, and I'm, I'm not mad about it, I'm not mad about it, but, ugh, does it, it really, it really bugs me, Constant Hellenius, because I was really high on Hellenius, he was my number 11 pick, Jed Luchenko, he's a good player, speed, you guys, you, you, you cannot beat this player, he is so, he is so fast and straight, in a straight line that there is, like, probably nothing you can do to beat him, Aside from the really strong compete game and the really great passing, I don't really see a lot of upside to his game. Again, he really projects to me as a middle six center, and I, I mean, what else can you get at the top 13? I would have liked to see Constant Hellenius go here. I would have liked to see a guy like Michael Page go here. But Jet Luchenko, if they were going to reach for a pick, and I guess this is just one of Danny Briere's guys, I get it. He likes a high compete forwards. The thing is, I don't see him coming over from the OHL for another year and a half. Um, I would like to see him play as, as soon as possible. I don't really see the upside in him. He's very talented with his stick handling. I think he can get a little bit more fine-tuned, but I'm glad it wasn't a defenseman. I'm glad they addressed a need at center. So um, the recording messed up a little bit. Um, you missed only two picks. So I have, or we had Costa Hellenius go at 14. Great pick for Buffalo. Um, really solid, rounds out their entire rebuild, I think, really well. He's a lot of great options on the wing. And I got really excited when I got another pick right. Yeah, 
Yes! And I beat my last two years' predictions with three picks right this year. I'm super excited. Michael Brunswick Negard goes to Detroit. Um, he's the exact Stevie Eisman pick that they've been needing. Um, a huge fan of that. A big fan of how they'll go with, with that. I, I mean, he just we knew that he was going to be my, uh, a Stevie Y pick from day one. Good for them. St. Louis is on the clock now. I'll be back with that reaction. The Blues are up to the clock now. Um, I have no idea who they're going to go with here. I had them picking uh, Adam Yurichek here originally. So we will see where they go here. Oh, I was right again! Two for two! Let's go! All right. Okay, sorry for all your eardrums, but I got this pick right. I knew this was exactly where uh, Eurocheck was probably going to fall. Um, they needed defense. Or actually, no, I got this wrong. Oh, yeah, because I had Solberg going here. Oh, my gosh. Well, I knew they needed defense here. Um, I knew that this was going to be the place where either Eurocheck or Solberg was going to go because they were probably going to reach for one of them here. Really solid pick. He got injured for most of the year this season. That was one of the reasons why I had him pretty low. He projects to be a very solid two-way defenseman if he can round out his game. And trust me, there is a lot of rounding out that needs to be done. Offensively, he has some upside. Um, I like some of the stick handlings that he does. He has a really good stick handling ability. Um, and again, edge work is fine. Really, really solid. I like some of the passes that he makes. Like, I still think that Juracek could be... There could be better options than Juracek here at, at 15. At 16, my bad. Oh, I would have liked to see a guy like Dominic Badinka here. Uh, that's who I would have picked if I was in their situation if they wanted a right-hand shot. But uh, he has a good stick handling ability. He is somewhat... Yeah, he's pretty physical. He's, he's got a good, good compete. It's just the sense. It's just sometimes the skating and the speed um, that I'm so critical of. Plus, again, he has a lack of production. And I really didn't enjoy that. So that's why he wasn't in my first round. He was like uh, my mid-second round. But uh, you know what? Good for St. Louis. If they can develop him, he could be a hell of a player. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens uh, with the Capitals, the next pick. Okay, so Washington Capitals, their pick is in. I had Beckett Seneca falling here, but I don't think it's going to be the pick here. I have no idea who they're going to pick. Could be Cole Eisman. They can get another great goal scorer here. Let's see what they can get here. Ooh, that is, wow! Tarek Parasak. wow! That is a big reach there. He was just outside of my top 40. I love this player a lot. So he is number 41 on my entire list. In my opinion, this is the biggest reach in the draft so far. Luchenko was a little bit of a reach. Yurichek was a little bit of a reach considering about where they were ranked consensus-wise. But Tara Parasak was not consensus a top 20 pick at all. Washington really liked this guy. I think they stayed at 17 because this is a pick that is just... It's a little bit shocking. But... This guy could be a poor man's Tyler Toffoli. He scored 105 points in the WHL this season, which is not nothing. The main concern with this prospect is skating, and it's really bad. His skating, I'm not going to mince words, it is not great at all. But 43 goals, 62 assists, this guy gets a ton of points, and his offensive sense and his offensive playmaking ability is really great. He is going to go to the front of the net for you and be an amazing lethal scorer on the net. Whether this year was a one-off or not, we will see. He, had, he did have 14 points in 12 playoff games for Prince George, but I think the skating is a huge concern for them. Uh, I think they do need to seriously round that out, uh, and yes, that's that's going to probably be the main issue. But Tarek Parasak, yeah, very surprising there. That's at se uh, 17, wow. Here we go. Second selection for the Blackhawks. Sasha Boisvert is the pick here for Chicago. Center was the need here, and I thought they were going to go with a Michael Hage, who I'm very high on. However, they went with another bigger player at number 18 at center, which is, again, they need better center depth, and you're not going to get a lot much better than Sasha Boisvert. I really, really enjoy this pick. I think it's a really solid pick for the Blackhawks. They're getting size, they're getting skill, they're getting leadership in Sasha Boisvert. I think it's a good pick. I mean, yeah, they... And it's a little bit of a break from tradition, but he is still going to North Dakota. It's still a USHL pick going to a top NCAA program. So I'm a big fan of it. So, yeah, good for the Blackhawks. They're building the right way. I like that they went center once again because you can never have too much center depth. Um, and, yeah, they they get a, they come out here with a pretty good haul once again. Bedard and Moore last year, Levshinov and Boisvert this year. They're building a pretty solid core. Big fan for them. Vegas picking at number 19. I had them going with Liam Greentree. I still think that's the best option for them to go here. Cole Eisenman is on the board, though. This could be where he goes. We'll see what happens here at number 21. They're about to announce it. Let's see it. 
Trevor Connolly. So this, so they have been linked here for a long time to go with this player. I'm actually not going to mention any of the controversies off the ice because those have been well documented. And once again, I will leave a link to the Corey Prominent article in the description. However, Trevor Connolly is a supremely talented forward. I think he's one of the most dynamic players in the rush. He's got a great skating ability. He is incredible with his stick handling. And this guy is just a mold for people to mold into a tremendous player. A very Vegas pick because he's very controversial, but he's gonna he might thrive in that system. And I was I was I was thinking that he could be involved in a draft day slide because of how documented his issues were. However, he's going to Providence next season. He's going to be playing there with John Mustard, who is one of my favorite players in the entire draft, and I believe he can round out his game. And I'm really happy to see that he's going to a good organization like like Vegas. I am a fan of Trevor Connolly. He can turn around and mature from. I am a huge fan of him as a player, and I really hope that he rounds out for Vegas. This is a really good fit for him. Good for Trevor Connolly. I believe in him, but he needs to do a lot of work on and off the ice. So, the New York Islanders on the clock here. Cole Eisman's on the board. Liam Greentree's on the board. Uh, Trevor Connolly, my pick for them. Or Sasha Boivar's off the board. I think they could go center with Michael Hage here, too. Anders Lee's making the pick. Here we go. All right, here we go. Cole Eisenman is the pick at number 20. He is a tremendous goal scorer. I don't need to tell you all that already. Um, this is a crazy fall in the draft. I cannot believe that Cole Eisenman fell here. Uh, I'm a little worried about how he'll develop because Oliver Wallstrom was a similar player who uh, kind of was selected with a similar asset to them uh, a long time ago with Noah Dobbs in the same draft. But Cole Eisenman, read my lips when I say this. He is the highest upside in the entire draft. No matter how he develops, he's going to be a 30-goal scorer at the next level, and you can bet your money on that. He's going to be playing with Macklin Celebrini next year at BU. He's from Newburyport, Mass. This guy could round out his game excellently, and I'm a huge, huge fan of Cole Eiserman. Him going to the Islanders kind of is just a joy. It's amazing. He... Uh, is really going to develop great over there. I think uh, they did mess up with Oliver Wallstrom and Kiefer Bellows, but third time's the charm, am I right? Um, I think he's going to, because this is exactly what the New York Islanders need in their rebuild. Or I wouldn't say rebuild, but I said like built rebuilding on the fly, I guess, because they made the playoffs this year. If he can come over as soon as possible, he could really be effective for them. No matter how he develops or, the, or how he rounds out the rest of his game, if he does or not, it, again, completely up to him, by the way, because he honestly has the highest upside in the draft he is still going to be a 30 goal scorer at the next level consistently. So bet your money on that. They get a shot in the arm to the center core, plus they get a the second best player in the entire draft with Demidov. Michael Hage was one of my favorite centers. I would have wanted him to be selected by Philly at 13, but this is a good pick regardless. I really like how he routed out his game in the, in the USHL with Chicago. He was a dynamic player off the wing. They, I oh know he was a dynamic player who could play off the wing and on the center, and he's off the rush. He's just absolutely tight. He's incredible. I love his skating, love the stick handling, love the shot. He's going to play in Michigan next season. I love this really forward-thinking Montreal group. I think they're going to get whoever, whichever defense falls out of the first round. That was supposed to go in the first round, but wow, Michael Hage, man. What a great selection there. Montreal gets a really good pick at number 21. Dude, I'm recording this so much. All right, so Nationals up here. Uh, they're at 22. Let's see who they select here. I had Emma, Emma Hemming here. Oh, that's a great pick here. Really solid pick. Really good pick. Okay, so I had him a little bit outside of my first round, but I think this is a very high compete center player for the Natural Predators. I'm a really big fan of him. I think it's a really, uh, really good pick. Pretty solid compete. I like this. I like the goal scoring. I like what he does with his stick. I like the the effort that he gives. One thing I will say is that he is very raw. Very, very raw prospect, so Nashville is going to have to do a lot of development with him. So we'll see what happens here. Toronto has the next pick, but again, a solid pick by Nashville. I think this is a really good reach for them, so we'll see. Good for them. They could get a good defenseman here, or good. They can get a high defenseman here in EJ Emery, Cole Hudson, Stian Solberg, one of those guys. So we'll see what happens here with Anaheim, but I really like the move to trade up. It only matters what they can do with it. So this is where the draft really drops off. So we'll see who they pick at 23. All right, here come the Ducks with their selection here at number 23. Ooh, okay. All right. So, yeah, this is, a, this is a man who's been on a lot of people's radars, and I think he is 
he's going to be pretty solid. I think him being selected out of the top 20 is good for him. It will be better for his development overall because it's not going to be a ton of pressure on him. And I like that he's going to Anaheim because they have a lot of solid defensemen there. However, I think there were better defensemen available. You are not going to find a more physical defenseman than Sion Solberg. This guy is an absolute beast. He will run the hell through you. Except sometimes he's too conserved with running the hell through you. And he'll miss you. And again, it'll be an all-alone breakaway from the other squad. That's the issue I really have with him. He's got a great shot. I think he's playing for Fardiestad BK next year in the Swedish League. Which is good for his development. But we will see what happens with him. Big fan of Sion Solberg going later than expected. Uh, because I had him in my 40s. And I think that's a good. I think this is a good landing spot for him with Anaheim. I think how to develop defense from the right way. Pavel Minchikov is a great example. Tristan Luno, and again, they keep adding. I think the defensive core is all set for them. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. I like. I like Stian Solberg here at 23. Colorado's on the clock. I have heard that they might be trading this pick to Utah. We will see what happens here. All right, and Utah just traded up to number 24, and I think he just said that they traded up for. A second and a third. Okay, so two seconds and a third for a first round pick. I don't like that by Colorado. A uh, really solid drafting by Utah. What? All right, that makes no sense to me. All right, well, whatever. We'll see who they pick with 24. All right, so let's talk about Cole Baudouin. Uh He just went 24. I don't know why Utah traded up for him. Um, I don't know if you can tell by the way I'm talking about him, but I am not a big fan of Cole Baudouin. Uh, he's not even my top 80. He's my 84 slot, but a lot of people had him in the this around this spot here for uh, their mock drafts. Cole Baudouin, I mean, he competes a lot. I don't see the compete in his tape, and I don't really see a lot outside of him being a bottom six centerman. But again... You need that anchor for Utah. We'll see what they can do with this pick, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Hi, these are some of the realities of recording live. Uh, I've had to switch mics three times, and this is my third mic. Um, it's pretty small. It's a lav mic, but the Boston Bruins are about to make their selection now. Um, yeah, Cole Baudouin to the Utah Hockey Club. That was just made. I'm not a huge fan of that pick, but uh, we'll see what they do here. Uh, I feel like Boston will go with a similar pick. I had Dean Latorno. I hope. They still go with a player like that, but Liam Greentree is a notable faller. He could be here, too. I'm recording. Here we go. All right, Boston is up now. I have my new mic. Hopefully, this isn't shit out like the other two mics. Boston, making their selection here. I have Dean Letourneau, basically, as their pick. Now, let's see if that's going to be the pick here. We'll see. I was right! Again, that's my fourth pick that I've gotten right. Dean Letourneau. So, again, he was a top 50 player for me. Um, I do think he is more upside than, say... Uh, Adam Juracek and Sian Solberg. Um, I really like how, again, he's a tall tower. He's six foot seven, D 214. I'm so happy. I have more. I have, I got some picks, right? I'm very happy. I'm a little bit, uh, with my Boston Bruins fans. I did call this. I, some of you know who you are. Um, but yeah, I, I could have seen this coming a mile away once they traded back into the first round, but Dean Latorno, a uh, very solid six foot seven pick. This revitalizes their center core. They get another tall tower that they've needed. His physicality and his compete and his shot and his stick handling look pretty solid, but they're all under question because of the amount of competition that he was playing against last year. So we don't know who this player could be, but he's playing for BC next year. So you guys are getting a great player. This makes so much sense for the Boston Bruins at 25. All right, here comes the Los Angeles Kings with their pick. We'll see who they pick. I had Igor Chernyshov at 21, but then they traded back to 26. Let's see who they pick. Liam Greentree, all right. Good for the Kings. They get a guy who falls in the draft, and you know what? I feel bad because I I predicted this guy to be a overrated player in this entire draft, and you know what? I'm a bit more of an optimist on him now. He should have been a top 19, top 20 pick at the least. Um, I only had an issue when people said he was going to go top 10. He is a really solid scorer. He's a really solid stick handler. I don't know how he went this low. But regardless, the Kings are getting a great pick, and they trade back, and they still win. That trade for 21 and 26 is going to be debated because, wow, the Kings got Green Tree and the Canadians got Page. I mean, they both got really good fallers. Good for them. So good for Liam Green Tree. He goes to a really good organization, and hopefully he is the answer to their scoring problem there in L.A. So I'm getting word that the Chicago Blackhawks are trading back into the first round 
at the 27th pick. Uh, I have the Hurricane selecting EJ Emery, and he, whoever trades here is going to select Emery. I'm still going to count that as a win. I got four picks right. I'm still super happy about that. I am happy as a clam right now. So we'll see who they trade this pick to. It looks like it's going to be Chicago. And it's official. The Chicago Blackhawks will be making their third selection in the first round, and they trade two seconds to move up to 27. Who they could pick here? So they picked Sasha Boisvert, and they picked Artem Levshinov. This could be a wing, and I think this could be Andrew Basha at number 27. This could be Marek Van Acker. This could be Julius Mietnin. And if it's a defense, Dominic Bedinka, Cole Hudson, because they actually, Cole Hudson might be a good bet here because they don't really have a truly offensively dynamic defenseman um, outside of Kevin Korchinski. This could be Cole Hudson here. Here, I, I'm, I'm My head's in a pretzel. Here we go with Chicago with a third first round pick. Who will they pick? Merrick Van Acker. Look, that was one of the names that I thought we could go here. So this guy is a complete compete guy. He is a effort player for them. He's going to be a pretty solid wing. What I worry about is a long-term offensive upside. I think he did have a great year this year in the OHL, but this is a very solid pick. I think they were worried that someone was going to pick him here. Uh, he did suffer a torn labrum, but I think overall he fights like he's six foot four. He will fight you. Like he'll drop the gloves day one. And I think that's something that the Chicago Blackhawks are sorely missing in all of their picks so far in their rebuild. I really like this pick for Chicago. It gives them a little bit of personality with their skill. And yeah, Van, Van Acker should be a great pick for them uh, that will definitely stay on the roster and not be traded for assets to get the re get out of the rebuild soon. So good pick by Chicago. I like him. He should be over and playing sooner rather than later, but it's a matter of how his offensive upside will happen. So we'll see what he'll do. Calgary's pick here. Let's see who they pick. Ooh, okay. That's a little bit uh, higher than I would have liked to have seen him, but two Muskegon Lumberjacks from the USHL go in the first round, and Matt Bay Gridden is a pretty solid piece, too. I did think he was a bit of a foil to Sasha Boisvert, who went a little bit earlier, but nonetheless, this guy can score, and that's something that you can really use. That's something they're going to need very badly soon. I do think they need someone who will be able to pass. A little bit and i mean you have parek he can get a ton of goals he can go to dirty areas and get it done for you he's a pretty solid shot i wouldn't classify it as one of the better ones in the draft i would say it's still above average uh not high end but he's got a really solid uh, goal scoring ability he's a michigan wolverine next year so we'll be playing with a lot of great players and he'll be the main goal scorer on that squad next year as a freshman and i really like the development path he went through he went to the ushl and now He's committed to college, and he's going to be playing there next year. And I, I think he's got a really solid uh, path to him. I didn't think he would be going be going in the first round of the draft. But, hey, really solid pick. I think the Flames get a great player in Gridden. I think they can – the possibility – I'm thinking of the possibilities, obviously, for what they could use for him. But I think this is a pretty solid uh, draft for them. I think considering who they got last year and who they have in the system, plus Perek this year who can dish it off to him. So good pick for Calgary. I think they could have gotten a lot of other value here, but this is where you see a lot of interesting picks. I'm like, okay, I see it. Good pick. So I had Dallas taking Tarek Parasak here, realistically. Uh, he obviously went at 17. I think Emil Hemming is the best player available on the board for them, or of course Dominic Beninka, but we'll see what they get here. Yeah, Emil Hemming. I knew it was going to be him. Great right wing, a fantastic shot, really great skating ability, and an even better compete. This guy really is a very complete all-around forward. He needs to round out a bit of more of a passing game to himself. But I would love to see him play on smaller ice as soon as possible. Great pick for Dallas. So at pick number 30, we have the New York Rangers. This is the whole reason why James Dolan didn't win the Stanley Cup this year was because they didn't want to trade this pick. Uh, everyone's really thinking he's going to be EJ Amory. I think it's going to be EJ Amory. I can't believe that he's been passed on so much. But then again, Alphonse Frey hasn't been selected this high at all. So we'll see. They're coming up to the podium now. Who will the Rangers pick at 30? Everyone's saying EJ Amory. I think it's going to be EJ Amory as well. Don't be surprised if it's... Charlie Elick or Igor Chernyshov here as well. We'll see who they will pick here. There you go, EJ Emery, and we knew it. Great pick. They essentially get a guy that I compare to Keandre Miller. So good for them. Good for them. Good pick for EJ Emery. I think he's going to a great place. Um, this guy's going to develop really well in that roster. He's going to be playing with Sasha Poivre next season. Um, very good look for the Rangers. I mean, he is going to be a big puck-moving defenseman for them. And they, I mean... As someone who's not the biggest fan of the Rangers, because I'm a root for a division rival, this scares me. I mean, good pick. For, they have a great pick there. Um, I think they were, I think it was 
he, he was a beast in the combine and he looks really solid. We will see how much use they will get out of him when he starts developing at North Dakota in a few seasons. The Maple Leafs here. Ooh, that is a reach. All right. Toronto with a big reach here for Ben Danford. Um, I had him as my second favorite defenseman from Oshawa. I liked Luca Morelli a little bit more. However, I think they're getting a good player here. Uh, some good value. Um, Ben Danford is a two-way defenseman, but he has a pretty underdeveloped game. I would have loved to have seen Henry Muse be the pick here or Luca Morelli be the pick here, but Ben Danford, I guess they want some defensive kind of defenseman. Uh, they're tired of just trying to trade for them at the trade deadline, and I feel like Ben Danford, if he can round that defense and kind of bulk up a little bit, can be a pretty solid option as a defensively minded two-way forward. A uh, two-way defenseman. It's kind of Luca Morelli was his line mate and was creating all the offense. But Ben Danford, a very solid. Another OHL pick here. Let's see who the Flyers pick at number 32 to round out the first round. So apparently the Flyers are trading this pick, uh, number 32. And we will find out who they are trading it to in just a second here when the trade horn comes on. Notable players that will not be drafted in the first round, barring one of them getting picked with a 32nd pick. Igor Chernyshov, still on the board. Uh, I had Andrew Basha in my first round. He's still on the board. John Mustard, Teddy Stiga was really high on my list. I knew that people weren't going to really like him as much as I did. Dominic Badenko was also high on my list. Alphonse Frey was also another name that I was really high on. Um, Cole Hudson is another name as well that's not going to get picked as well. Uh, Julius Mietin in a very late addition to my top 32. I really liked him. Nikita Artemanov, somebody I had for a little bit. Henry Muse as well. We will see with all these players where they go tomorrow. Um, also, Linus Erickson, he was my top 30 as well. I can't believe I forgot about him. Yeah, nobody seemed to really pick up on some of these players, so I can't wait to see where they go next year. And, of course, the ever-underrated Maxim Massé and Alexander Zetterberg. We'll see where they all go tomorrow. I hope I can't really live stream because I'll be editing all of this tomorrow to try to get it out. Let's see who the Flyers traded this to. Here's the trade horn. A lot of trade. The Edmonton Oilers are on the clock. So, <gasps> Oh, they get a conditional first rounder. I like that conditional third. All right, I like that. I'm so glad they didn't get they didn't get seconds. I'm glad they got a first because God forbid the Oilers fall down. So who could the Oilers pick here? I, I literally don't know who the hell they could even go for at this point uh, because they could go for a lot of players because they just lost the cup. I think they would might want to go with the most NHL ready forward. And if that's the case, they would go with Igor Chernyshov. But... I could see them totally going in another, a number of directions in terms of the WHL, maybe going with a John Mustard, maybe going with a Teddy Stiga. We will see. We'll see where who is making the pick here. All right. So, as many of you will remember, if you're a longtime viewer of this channel, back in February of my draft rankings, Sam O'Reilly was my 32nd forward in the entire draft. He has since fallen to around the third, second round. But boy, am I a big fan of Sam O'Reilly. He's a bit of a grinder. He's a bit of a like a bottom six forward, but I think he does a wonder for a lot of teams in the in the bottom six. He's trying to make it to the podium. Everyone's trying to leave. He's not going to be able to get to the podium in time. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my goodness. But uh, I really like this pick for Edmonton. This is a really good rebound uh, for them in terms of them losing the Stanley Cup. But great pick. I really think um, they get a very good value player here at 32. Um, I don't know why I didn't see this earlier, but this is a very great effort player, a great compete player. Um, he makes very smart decisions in terms of tools, shot, pass. He needs to get better at hockey tools in general, but he has the smarts to overcome that. I think he has a similar upside to an Easton Cowan, so we will see what he will do. But he's a very smart player, and he got a lot of he got a lot, he did a lot of good things with Sam Dickinson earlier this year. That concludes. The first round of this draft, I try to live react to all of them. Sorry for my mic cutting out and not being great for a little bit of half of these picks and me not looking at the camera because I've been looking at both Twitter and uh, my TV screen here. But I thank you so much for watching. I will be taking a little bit of a break. I have been putting out nonstop content for the last, since I got home from school, so the last like month and a half. So I'm taking a bit of a two-week break, but I will be back with a free agency recap of the first two weeks of free agency. For now, thank you so much. I've been Link Dan Savage, your host, signing off.